He set me free. He set me free. Come on, girls. Next song down. Praise the Lord. Once like a bird in freedom I dwell No freedom from my sorrow I fell But Jesus came and listened to me And glory to God Yes, He set me free He set me free Yes, He set me free He broke the bond That is Sister Judy. Praise the Lord. You love the Lord tonight. Oh, glory to God. Isn't it good to be in the house of God? Isn't it good to feel His presence? Brother David, it's good to be among the living this, this evening, isn't it? Praise God this evening. Praise God this evening. What a mighty God we serve. Come on, give Him a wave offering in the house tonight. Yeah. Yes, amen. We come to worship. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Y'all ready for the word tonight? We're going to see what the Lord has for us tonight. And uh, before I go in any farther, I do want to do a commercial. I usually don't do one of these. But I'm going to do a commercial right here to those that are live streaming out there. <laughs> praise God. Might be watching it. Let's say it's important that if you watch one of our services and you do it on Facebook, I hate it when they do this, but I have to say it anyway. Hit the like button. Okay? Hit that like, L-I-K-E button. And when she uploads it and puts it on to YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Did I get that right? Somebody tell me if I got that right. Subscribe, and then, then our services will come up, and you have a choice of whether or not you want to. To listen to them. If you don't want to listen to them, just hit the off button, the mute button, or what? Of what, Tangie? <laughs> For what? <laughs> 
She said to also tell you on Facebook to hit the share button and share it with somebody. That shows y'all how much I know about this electronic stuff. I thank God. God gives us people that knows what they're doing on this end of stuff because I sure don't, okay? But I needed to say that, and it is important that you do that, okay? So subscribe to our channel. Praise God. I'm glad I got that commercial out. All right, we're going to get into the Word of God tonight, and we actually are teaching again tonight. And uh, I'm going on to a subject, it's going to sound like I'm going to say something that, that actually is the opposite of what I'm going to be talking about. But we'll see in just a minute. Are you girls ready back there? The title of the message tonight is Shoulder the Burden or Carry the Burden. See, it sounds opposite of what I'm going to be talking about. But we're going to be reading out of Numbers chapter 7, verses 1 through 9. Go ahead. You stand, if you would, in reverence to the reading of the Word of God. And it came to pass. On the day that Moses had fully set up the tabernacle and had anointed it and sanctified it and all the instruments thereof, both the altar and all the vessels thereof, and had anointed them and sanctified them, that the princes of Israel, heads of the house of their fathers, who were the princes of the tribes and were over them that were numbered, offered and they brought their offering before the Lord. Six covered wagons and twelve oxen, a wagon for two of the princes, and for each one an ox, and they brought them before the tabernacle. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take it of them, that they may be, that they may be to do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. And thou shalt give them unto the Levites, to every man according to his service or his need. Is there anything else? And Moses took the wagons and the oxen and gave them unto the Levites. Two wagons and four oxen he gave unto the sons. Now listen to who he gives them to. Unto the sons of Gershom according to their service or need. And four wagons and eight oxen he gave unto the sons of Moriah. Moriah, and I don't know if that's correct. According unto their service or need. Under the hand of Ithamar, the son of Aaron, the priest. But unto the sons of Kohath he gave none. Because the service of the sanctuary belonging unto them was that they should bear upon their shoulders. And I did not give this to Terry to put up, but I want to read Matthew 28, 18 through 20. <coughs> Jesus said, this is the Great Commission, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And the church says, Amen. Sister Luke, what in the world have I just read? Well, we're going to find out tonight. Before I say anything about the scriptures in our teaching out of the Word of God tonight, let me say that God intended for us to cast all of our cares upon him. For he cares for us. We are never, as children of God, to be ruled, Brother Disher, by worry, by anything that the enemy would bring our way. And what I am talking about tonight in shouldering or carrying the burdens, I'm talking about the burden of ministry the burden it's called a burden of ministry and we'll explain that a little farther something that God gives each one of us to carry 
there's a purpose, and we're going to get to that as well. And what we are calling a burden tonight is actually a privilege from the Almighty God that He gives to each one of us. This passage of Scripture deals with the tabernacle. Sister Luke, what in the world was the tabernacle? It was a traveling church. When they come out of the Egyptian bondage, they'd been there 400, 430 years, somewhere along there. And God himself gave the plans to Moses to build this traveling church, and he gave him the plans for it. Come on in. Good to have y'all. Gave him the plans for this traveling church, and it was made after the pattern of the, of the one that was in heaven. He gave every one of the plans. He gave special wisdom to a man by the name of Bezalel who was to create a lot of the stuff that was to be done. Now, it was for the people as they were on the move in the desert, in the wilderness. This sanctuary, this church was to be located right smack dab in the middle of all those tribes that, were, that when they would encamp. They sinned one time and had to be put outside the camp. But God intended for his glory to be in the center of everything that took place. There were over a hundred tons of silver in the sockets alone that held the foundation of this traveling church. Think about that. The foundation of this church was large because the foundation is more than adequate to meet the needs that everything else was to stand on. It would hold it all up. The foundation of the church of the living God was built upon the prophets and the apostles and the cornerstone himself was Jesus Christ. That's what, that everything was lined up to the cornerstone. If a church or a life, Sister Crystal, is built on the right foundation, that church or that life will never collapse. The church of the living God, Wally, is not going under. It's going up. Did y'all hear that? We are near home tonight than we have ever been before. Woo! Look up, children of God, for your redemption draweth nigh. And here in these scriptures, the tabernacle has been completed. I'm building a foundation for where I really want to get tonight. And the Bible said that the princes of Israel, heads of the tribes, came when the tabernacle furniture and everything was completed and they set it up. They came and brought an offering. And they wanted to support what God was doing. They, didn't, they were not priests. They did not do the work of the tabernacle. But they understood that God was in what was being done. So they wanted to contribute to the work of the Lord. Would to God we had more people that felt that way. Verse 3 tells us what they brought. He said, take in verse 5... And three, and then he said, take these, the oxen and the covered wagons, and divide them up among the, the tribes according to their service, according to what they would need. Six covered wagons, 12 oxen, two per wagon. And he says, I want you to take these to help the work of the Lord. They divided them up. They gave them to the sons of Gershom. They gave them to the sons of Moriah. But he said unto Kohath, you don't give him anything. Whatever service, whatever work that they are to do, I don't want a beast of burden helping them out. I want them and them alone to shoulder the burden of the ministry that I have placed upon their lives. You see, their responsibility was to carry the holy things of the tabernacle, Brother Richard, upon their shoulders 
whenever they moved this traveling church from one place to another. Now let me say this right here before I really get into the meat of the word. There are times as a pastor, and I'm assured that some of you do the same thing, that we talk to numerous people who have tremendous situations in their life. They have things that actually I cannot talk about from this pulpit because they are confidential. They carry heavy loads. They carry heavy responsibilities. And in the natural, when we look at these things, and I have heard a common thread run among many of the people that have talked to me when their hearts were broken and they would say something like preacher it's not fair it's just not fair and I have to be honest brother Richard in the natural if we look from a natural perspective there have been times when I thought no it's not it's really don't look like it is because some had lost everything that it took them years to gain, years to build up. It doesn't seem fair to us that we might lose our health insurance or our jobs or our home, our physical health. I don't want to leave you with a downer, but life sometimes just does not, Gina, seem like it is fair. But we live in a sin-cursed world. And that's why we need God and those kind of burdens we are to cast upon Him for He cares for us. There are some who seemingly get healed and some don't. It seems like we look around, Brother Wayne, and there are people, some of them even sinner people, and they never have a financial problem in their life. And then there's other people that it's all you can do to meet your bills from month to month. Listen, good people get sick. Good preachers get voted out of their churches. Good preachers get talked about and lied upon. I know I've experienced it. Good friends get betrayed. Good people lose their jobs. Good Christian people, even preachers who know the word inside out, who preach for years, get in their older age, and all of a sudden all timers hit, and then they no longer know those who even love them the most. Good people sometimes will have a spouse who decides, I just don't want to be married anymore. Good people go through things that seem to be unfair when they're viewed from the natural eye. And without God, what would we do? What would we do if we could not place our burdens upon Him? And I look at the Scriptures and I think, when I read to you, was it fair for Gershom? And Moriah, they, they were heads of the tribes. Was it fair for them that they got help in carrying their heavy load? But for Kohath, the Lord said, you don't get anything. What you're going to do is shoulder or carry the burden on your own shoulders. And that's how it seems to some of us. And we think life just isn't fair. But the truth is this burden, as I said before, was part of the burden of ministry that was placed upon this tribe. And it was a privilege for them to be able to do this. I want to tell you that if God filters it through your hands and he allowed it into your life, you just pray and believe God. Shoulder it. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't turn back and don't say God has forsaken me or I can't do this. Don't do that. 
There are some burdens in life that the Lord says, I do not want to impress anybody else to carry this load of ministry except you. I only want those who love me and who are sanctified to my glory and my purpose that I have called them to, to carry this burden. In all my years, Brother Richard, I have read this and read this, and, and I've never really understood these scriptures, and it made me wonder, well, if the Lord didn't give them anything to help them in their service of ministry, what kind of a job did they have to do that they couldn't get any help with it? And then it dawned on me. You see, back in Numbers chapter 4, when Israel was getting ready to move the tribe, every time that they moved, they gave them instructions on how and where to move, how to tear down that church, that traveling church, how to wrap it, how to carry it, what to do with it, who could handle it and who couldn't. And God would have a pillar by day and a fire by night. Some of the historians say that that fire went as high and so did the cloud as high as three miles up in the sky. I don't know. But they said it went way up there in order that the entire two and a half million or so people would know when the camp was to move. And God said, when the pillar stays, we are to stay. But when the pillar moves, we are to move. That meant you didn't move until you looked up. You understand? You had to look up to heaven to know when to stay or when to go. And God was saying, you never make a move while you are looking down to the earth. You have got to look up. You shouldn't ever make a critical decision in your life when things are working against you and they're going so bad. Especially if you're down and discouraged and we all get there at some time or another. But we don't stay there. That's not the time to make a decision, a major decision in your life. Yet I find often time that when folk quit church or they quit a ministry, many times they do it, Brother David, at the lowest place in their life. And you will hear them say, God spoke to me. God told me to do it. But God says that's the last place you ought to be when you make a major decision. You are with me so far? God said when it's time to move, this is what I want you to do. I want the sons of Aaron, the Levites, Take the veil down out of this traveling church that divided the Holy of Holies from the holy place. Take the pieces of furniture that was inside that church. Put them in a proper order. Numbers chapter 4 gives you that order. I don't have time to read it. And he said, cover all of those holy things with a blue cloth. Because blue represented heaven. He said, I want you to then put, make sure they're covered with the badger skin. Why badger skin? Because it waterproofed each piece of furniture. In other words, put heaven all around it. That's what he was saying. Honey, you need to keep yourself waterproofed from this world. Wrap yourself in God's glory. Because you are now the temple of the Holy Spirit of God. His glory dwells within you. And you need to make sure that the glory of God surrounds everything that you and I do. When the world sees us, 
they ought to see Jesus on us and in us and around us and through us. He said, after you get it all covered, after the Levites cover it all up, he said, then call the sons of Kohath, the ones who didn't get any help. The others could take their works and put it in a covered wagon. They could get the oxen to pull that load. But he said, when you get this precious furniture of that tabernacle, such as a candlestick, and the Ark of the Covenant where the glory of God was at, and the mercy seat, and the altar of incense, and, and table of showbread where, where the bread was at, and the, and the altars, uh, you know, they had sacrifice of prayer and praise would go up from that altar. He said, when you get all that covered, he said, then you call the sons of Kohath, and they come in, and they will take the stays, S-T-A-Y-S, which was nothing but poles. And the furniture had rings in it, Sister Crystal. And the poles fit through the rings so that they could hoist it up and put it upon their shoulders. And they were to start following the cloud and the fire. You see, having it on their shoulders was a type and shadow of Jesus who would shoulder our burdens uh, and the fact that the government would one day be upon his shoulders all of their life from the age of 30 years old until the age of 50. That's how long they had to do this. All they knew, Brother Richard, was shouldering the burden. They never one time got to go look at any of this furniture in the tabernacle. They were not priests. They never one time got to stand at the table of showbread or, or, or the candlestick or the mercy seat. They never one time got to experience the glory of God in the Holy of Holies. They stood back and at the right time they were called to do one thing. And that was to hoist that burden of that furniture upon their shoulders and carry it and they never once got to even touch it or see it. You're not getting what I'm saying, children. Their whole life, they carried something that they never could see. It's one thing to carry a burden, but it's another to carry a burden that you can't even see. And the sons of Aaron wrapped it, but they carried it after it was wrapped. It's one thing to say, Lord, I'm willing to carry that ministry that you have placed upon my life. But can I participate in the joy of the glory? Just a little bit, Lord. And he says, that's not your job. You just be patient. You carry what I give you to carry. Has God ever laid a burden on you and you didn't even know what it was? Sister, I don't understand that. Has God ever woke you up in the middle of the night and put a burden of prayer or somebody on your heart or on your spirit and you had no other choice but to get up and pray asking God to help that person? Oftentimes they're Christians and you don't even know what the problem is. God just gives you a name and a burden of prayer. You understand, all of us have been there. It happens sometimes over lost people. And God will lay the burden of praying for that lost individual. And you feel like, God, I'm going to die if you don't save them and lift this burden off of me. 
and you would find an altar and you would seek God saying, God, I don't know why, but I'm willing to carry this for them. There's a reason, God, and it's so you can touch them and it's so your spirit will be able to deal with them. And as I thought on all of this, and I've read different references, there's scriptures in 1 Chronicles 15, 22 that kept sticking out. And it was about a feller by the name Shenanai. So I looked up Shenanai's family tree. I found his name in running references on Kohath. Now remember, Kohath had to shoulder the burden. And Kohath, according to 1 Chronicles 6 and 2, had a son by the name of Izar. And Izar, according to 1 Chronicles 26 and 29, had a descendant named Shenanai. So Shenanai was Kohath's, the burden bearer, Kohath's great, great grandson. And the Bible said God did something special for Shenanai out of all of those Levites. God says, I'm going to give him a song. First Chronicles 15, 22, and Shenanai, chief of the Levites, was for song. He instructed and was skillful in singing. He was a song leader and he instructed others how to sing as well. And God says, I'm going to give him a song and he's going to be skillful with this song. So here we have Shin and I, the descendant of Kohath, the burden bearer, singing songs. But by the way, Shenanai's duty did not change. He too had to hoist it upon his shoulders and he bore the, bar bore the burden as well. Carried a burden that nobody could see. It was handed down from father to son to grandson to great-grandson. And he, they did this until they wandered through the wilderness and there came a day in the promised land that Solomon's temple was built. And for the last time, the furniture was put in the temple and they was able to rest. But God was saying, I know you're carrying a burden. I know that the ministry I have laid upon you can sometimes get hard. You're carrying my glory from place to place. You are carrying the Ark of the Covenant, Jesus Christ. You're carrying the mercy seat. It's wrapped in blue. It's wrapped in heaven. It's been placed upon your shoulders but I'm not going to let you go and do this for nothing I am going to give you something greater than all the wealth in the world could buy I am going to place a song in your heart to sing through your lips and the heavier the burden gets the more skillful you're going to get with the singing. And the sweeter the song, Brother Disher, will get in your soul as this takes place. And the more you sing, the more you're going to worship me, the more the glory is going to fall, and it's going to get to the point you're not even going to be able to feel the load any longer that you're carrying. Do you know what they did as they carried their load on their shoulders? They sang a song. 
Do you realize that many of the great songs of yesteryear were written under great times of distress? And the song gets sweeter when the load gets heavier. But God gives us joy in our heart for cur carrying a burden and he'll be with us through it. Holy God. Let me tell you a story. There was a little preacher and he had another preacher friend and his name was Roger. And Roger and his whole church were just full of love. They had compassion. <coughs> Excuse me. They carried the burden for everybody that they could carry it for. They just had they just helped everybody. They made sure that everybody was taken care of. They just had a heart of gold. They also took care, Wally, of a little Haitian preacher and his family. And this Haitian preacher's name was Moline. Moline didn't have any arms. One day, Roger asked Moline, he said, would you go visiting with me at the hospital? He said, sure, I go. Afterwards, Moline said, I don't feel too good. And Roger remembered that Moline had a sickness where he had to eat real often because his blood sugar would drop. So he said, Moline, do you need something to eat? He said, yes. So he drove through a fast food drive through window. He got some food. It was in a bag. He sat it down in the front seat between him and Moline. He started to pull out, reaching down with one hand into that bag. And he realized Moline couldn't reach for his because Moline didn't have any arms. And it dawned on him. He was going to have to feed Moline. So he pulled over in the parking lot, and he said, Moline, do you want me to feed you? He said, I sure do. And he started feeding that little preacher. And he was so happy. And he said the longer he kept feeding him, the more the glory of God kept blessing him. Sister Diane, he got home. And his wife asked him, he said, what you been doing? You know what he told her? I've been feeding Jesus. Woo, hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. I've been feeding Jesus. You see, God gives you a song for the burden that you carry. I heard another story. It was a testimony that was given of a woman. She had a crippled arm and had it all, her law, all of her life and couldn't do anything with it. And there was an elderly couple that lived a few doors down from her and they couldn't, they couldn't fix food for themselves. Meals on wheels had been feeding them. For some reason, they quit coming. And one day it dawned on her, they don't have any way of fixing food. They, they need some help. I, I'm going to go see if I can help them. So she visited them. And she said to them, she said, you know, it's hard for me to cook for just me and my husband. Would you mind if I brought part of what I cook down here every evening rather than throw it in the way? And the man said, well, we don't take charity. You know how it is when folk have had something and worked all their life and all of a sudden they find themselves without anything. You know, they, there's a certain little bit of pride in there. She said, honey, this is not charity. It'll help me and it's no trouble. And you better taste my cooking anyway because you might not even like it. So she took food down to them and they wouldn't eat a bite in front of her. So she left out and went on home. The next evening... She went and knocked on the door with some more food. And the wife opened the door. And she could see him at the table. There he sat with a fork and a spoon in his hand. And he said, 
We haven't had home cooking for so long. I'd like to thank you so much for bringing this food. And she said they got to be real close friends with this couple. One day it dawned on her there might be something else that they might need. So she asked them. And the old woman said, well, I'm almost ashamed to ask you this. But could you help me to take a bath? It's been so long, and I, I can't get into the tub by myself, and it sure would feel good if you could just wash my bath. And she said, yeah, I'll be glad to do that. And she went in, and with her one hand, she run that water, and she helped that older lady get in that tub and she was just washing her back and she was thinking the whole time how that God was helping her carry the burden for this elderly couple. All of a sudden the old woman in the tub of water said, well looky there. And the woman realized she looked down and her arm that had been crippled all her life was suddenly restored whole. She said, while I was carrying the burden for somebody else, the Lord lifted my own burden. Let me urge you, put your shoulder to the plow and keep going. Pay the price if nobody else does it. And while you're bearing the burdens for somebody else, God will give you a song. It's part of your ministry for God that he's called you to. Hallelujah. I'm so tired of quitters who have come through the doors of this church. And no matter what they claim, most of them are not going anywhere else. And the burden just got heavy and they said it's not worth it or else fear stop them from coming. But you listen to me tonight. It's worth everything that you do, every mile that you travel, every sermon, Brother Richard, we preach, every church service we have, every dollar we give, every song that we sing, it's worth it all. Would you stand? God said, just shoulder the burden I placed on you and look up and fulfill the load that you have been given to carry. Shoulder the ministry I've given you. There was a reason that the old saints of God shouted. Do you know why? Sister Crystal, they shouldered the burden. And then they shouted, and they sang, and they kept going. They didn't give up. If there's anybody out there listening to me, maybe by live streaming, and you once had a ministry, you once had a calling that God placed on your heart. Maybe it was a ministry of prayer. Maybe it was helping the needs of somebody. And you've laid it aside because the burden got heavy. Repent. Go back and pick it up. Children, God will give you a song. He'll help you to carry it. God's not left us. He's with us every step of the way. He shouldered our burden of sin. And he's asking us to shoulder his gift of ministry that he has placed upon our lives. Let's work for the kingdom of God. Oh, glory to God. It looks dim. It looks dark. But I'm telling you, God knows exactly what's taking place. God's not dead. God's still alive. God knows what you're going through. He's still calling you into ministries. He's still got a work for you to do. Don't stop. It's worth it all. Father God, I've done the best of my ability tonight. Help us all to shoulder the, the ministry that you are calling us into. There are souls that are dying and going to hell. We need to be witnessing to them. We need to be inviting them to church.
told us. Let's worship. If you need to pray, the altars are open. him come on come on glory to God glory to God these called us to carry the great commission to go into all the world tell them about Jesus tell them they don't have long they need to get saved before it's too late hallelujah to the Lamb. praise God tonight praise God tonight yes 